Hello, this is Nataraj Upadhyay. Welcome to the third installment of the NU Trading and Investment Strategies. Today, I am going to start with the tools I use for day trading. So this is just an initial session. There should be multiple sessions to discuss different tools and approaches. So I'm just getting started because I promised before the weekend I will get something going. And today is Friday and uh, this is my last chance to keep my promise. So let us uh, get going. So I, ha I do have a presentation. So today's focus is using heat maps online effectively for day trading. So let us try to understand uh, what is heat maps and why it is useful. So the more broader question is how to trade effectively. To trade effectively, we need to have a good uh, grip on the general market trend for short term through long term. Though our focus is day trading, day trading is uh, market hours are from 9.15 a.m. through 3.30 p.m. Now, if it is commodities, it could be 9 a.m. all the way to, to the night 10.30 or 11, 11.30 p.m. So I am now focusing mainly for the stocks. So though the market opens at uh, 9.15 a.m., uh, one needs to do some homework. And the best uh, way to do homework uh, is a uh, couple of things. I, I typically listen to CNBC uh, TV 18 from 8 a.m. to 8.55 a.m. because they give a broader uh, perspective about uh, the market and the global queues and what to anticipate for the day and they do a good job. Then I switch to Z business because Z business is more trader friendly. Uh, you know, they are more tactical uh, and uh, uh, and uh, the perspectives comes better from CNBC, but specific opportunities, maybe Z business uh, would give once in a while. Now, why I switch to Z business at 855 is that CNBC 18 at the market opening time, they will invite some guy and start discussing some interview kind of things, which kind of a dampener because you want to focus on the market. You don't want to listen to uh, some company representative talking about why his company is good or uh, you know, to be invested. So that uh, 9 to 915, uh, for some reason, CNBC uh, TV 18 loses the focus on the ball, which is uh, helping the people, uh, you know, entering to the market at market open. So Z business uh, is better therefore for me. Uh, Z business, there is a lot of chit chat, you know, uh, guffaws and, you know, light comments, but it's okay. It keeps you kind of, uh, you know, engaged with the light mood. Uh, I do not uh, trust everything that comes in the channel, but it does alert you as to uh, what is going on. And typically, I don't need to keep Z business uh, channel on beyond 10 a.m. because it becomes a bit uh, distracting. And why I don't need to keep, I will show you through today's uh, uh, heat map demo. It is very important that we do our homework before the market opens. Now, there is one more thing I do, which I didn't mention here is, I do I do subscribe uh, uh, business line from Hindus, Hindu. Uh, the business line gives me kind of a uh, summary of the business uh, journalism. So that around 15, 20 minutes. So if there is something that is highlighted there, that also is in the back of my mind. So doing my homework, main focus is to have a grip on the global and national views. When you say global, it's uh, mainly U.S., uh, you know, there is a saying, no, if uh, U.S. catches cold, the other markets, you know, uh, sneeze. So that uh, impact is always there. So both global and national queues. So you need to have a grip on economy. Uh, what are the key policy decision changes, sentiments, interest rate, inflation, money flow, all these things. Then sectoral trends, which sector is lagging, which sector is uh, heated up and uh, various commerce trends, whether it is national or international and business cycle updates, you know, is uh, you know uh, crude oil is going up or not, why commodities market, how is this doing, all that, you need to have a good grasp 
uh, by listening to the TV channels or reading newspapers, expert commentary or some internet uh, sources. There are many internet sources. Expert commentary on current affairs, projections, risk reward equations will be always there. So with this, you have a grip. Then uh, every morning there will be a stock rating changes by rating agencies, you know, uh, whether it is buy, sell, uh, you know, uh, some upgrades, downgrades. That gives you an, a grip on sentiments because uh, these uh, ratings do impact the sentiments of the investors and traders and that reflects on the uh, moves on such scripts. Then there can be large block deals. See, large blo block deals uh, kind of, uh, you know, considered uh, bullish most of the time because the, it kind of uh, reiterates interest on new parties to buy the stock. While the, the selling party may be making profit and, you know, and, and you know, closing the deal, uh, and at what price the uh, the deal happens also important. If the deal happens at significant discount, then the discount will be reflected in the market with through a correction. So you need to understand the block deal statement as to whether it is a positive or a negative. And typically, the TV channels uh, make it very clear. You know whether it's a, a green or a red kind of an impact. Then there will be various corporate actions. Uh, that also is useful. So with this, uh, you are ready for the market. Uh, you have an, un, uh, in a, an approximate idea of what kind of opportunities to anticipate, what kind of risk windows to anticipate as on today. So, so you can even shortlist your potential action items for, on your portfolio. What to buy, what to hold, what to sell, how much money you have, how much money you have to arrange. You know, how, you know, how do you negotiate with all the variables here and what so what should you do right now typically what happens is i'm not going to discuss about day trading uh, strategies today because i'm focusing on only a particular tool today uh, so those discussions we'll do later as to how to trade at market open how to trade at market close how to trade in between the market all that discussion we will not do today so day trading is the daily presence in the market right so your presence is daily, but the type of trading you can do can, can vary. It could be intraday trading, it could be a, a swing trading, which is on a short term, or it could be a positional trading. So your portfolio may have distinct uh, segments. Certain things are meant for intraday, some certain things are a spillover from intraday to you know uh, just one or two couple of days, like BTST, buy today, you know, sell tomorrow kind of thing. Then swing trading. Swing trading is more technical. You buy a stock at low, anticipating it to go up. Then you sense it has peaked. Then you sell at a profit. Then positional trading is uh, more like a mutual funds uh, investment where you buy and hold. So uh, you may hold it for three months, six months, one year, and uh, the prices may vary uh, the swing, but you have a certain strategies as to how long to hold, what to anticipate, etc. But all these things will happen through a day. So in your day trading, there should be a clear segment in your mind where you are doing intraday, where you are doing swing trading, where you are doing positional trading. That distinction is very important. Now, to focus on the tool we are going to discuss today, let us understand trading life cycle. A trade, a, a, a trade needs to have a homework we said anticipate or sense opportunities so that uh, when it pops up you already have done homework it will, so you can quickly react right you need to quickly qualify opportunities right uh, you know some xyz script uh, has gone up five percent you don't need to jump unless you have a grip on that xyz stock so you need to make a fundamental analysis to make sure it is a worthy stock to invest you should make a technical analysis to make sure that the trend will be there and it will continue for a foreseeable feature for you to exploit. So that again we will discuss uh, separately. Then you have to align portfolio margins for the trade. You need to have that money ready in your account, right? Uh, trading account. So that also is important. Then you have to trade, which is to buy or to sell 
or to hedge using uh, f and o which we will discuss later so in this life cycle what we are discussing today is heat maps which is relevant only to sense the opportunities right how do you sense the triggers you know in the market now initially before using uh, these heat maps i was uh, dependent on some external agency you know some telegram channel or a whatsapp channel you know or some brokerage uh, uh, messages that may come but it was quite a uh, nuisance because uh, first of all many of these uh, channels are spammy because they will eventually say pay me money i will give you a better deal or something like that or there is a delay between sending that message and you receiving the message and acting on it and uh, further you cannot keep on looking at that message so your uh, entire trading activity needs to be like a meditation you cannot be uh, you know uh, stressed you cannot be acting like a headless chicken because then you will make lot of mistakes so in order for you to be very meditative in your day trading you should be very calm and uh, you should be able to have enough time to do your job so that's where i found these heat maps very useful and i am going to uh, explain uh, you know further what is a heat map see it becomes very clear when i demonstrate it is a dynamic price action representation of a particular script let's say either by volume or by market cap or various parameters so timeline of representation can be changed you know it can be shown for last one hour to last uh, one year scripts can be grouped by sector or can be seen independently a particular sector can be expanded the representation of distinction of price action moves can be customized so basically since this is dynamic this is online you can sense what is going on in the market right so that is the value of this heat map and i always sense the opportunities confirmation opportunities uh, confirmation through a heat map right opportunities validation is a different which we are not going to discuss today today we are going to focus on on the heat map so let us get into the heat map demo right away so i am going to close you know uh, close this uh, session for now uh, let us open the heat map i am actually uh, the market is open today so this is a an online representation of indian stock market today okay so this is around 11:47 am right so let us look at uh, the top line here see here all indian companies basically i can select what do i want to choose choose instead of all indian companies i can restrict only to nifty 500 or nifty 50 or nifty next 50 or snp bsc sensex other than that there are various other markets you can go including us markets so so right now our interest is only indian market i am keeping all indian companies for now so i am not making the change here then the heat map size can be based on a market cap or based on certain volumes right there are other things which i am not using so my primarily what i use is market cap and volume uh, right now this is set for market cap so the size of the heat map is typically uh, relative market cap of that script within that box which is by sectors right then the performance criteria here uh, performance can be for last one hour to it can go all the way to one year right then there are pre market changes can be marked post market changes can also be marked right now i have kept it as performance at one hour hello welcome back there was a disruption in my presentation due to a, a power uh, disruption i am in an apartment so when the main power supply is disrupted there is a backup coming from generators but there will be a 15 seconds delay so i do have a, a mini backup for my router so that my internet does not get disrupted however my internet company is being idiotic they are not keeping their own ups for their uh, uh, servers or whatever so they are uh, always getting into reset when the power gets disrupted which is not acceptable 
I'm following it up with them, but uh, the service always, you know, is uh, really lacks. So that is a different issue. Let us go get back to the uh, presentation. So we are doing the demo of heat maps. So let us go back to the heat maps. So this heat map is dynamic. So as the market changes, that also changes. I was talking about how we can represent the scripts in the heat map either by sector or without sector. Right now you are seeing it by sectors. And if you don't group it by sectors, you will see only individual companies because uh, maybe you are just interested in uh, exploiting spe you know, specific companies uh, which are now represented by performance by one hour. You know, that performance can be uh, green or red depending on the percentage. That percentage is shown here which also you can say minus 3%, 2% and 1% in red, 0% uh, is kind of white, then green again 1, 2, 3%. Typically what I do is I disable the white ones because they are uh, inaction. Either you should look at the stock which is going up or going down. There is no point looking at the stock which is uh, not moving much. So now I have pressed that white just to show you if I put all the stocks, including the stocks that are, you know, not moving, how it looks. So now this delay is coming from the trading view. The heat map I'm using is from trading view, in.tradingview.com. Probably a lot of people are using. Uh, so their server is taking time to update this. So that's a nuisance. So, okay, I was trying to show that I usually uh, you know, disable this uh, white segment, which is the scripts that move from within minus 1% to 1%. Because you are looking at opportunities. So you're looking for either positive move or a negative move. So, so embedding all these uh, white ones is not going to help you. So I just disable that particular portion. So similarly, you can disable all the negative stocks also and focus only on the positive if you want. So I am you know, disabling all the negative stocks also. But unfortunately, this is a free software, tradingu.com heat match. Since it's free, probably everybody is using like me and their servers are uh, very sluggish. So when the servers are sluggish, once in a while this happens. In such a case, I kind of reload the page. So now what I have done is I am keeping only the green ones. Okay, then I expand the screen to full screen mode. So if you are a bullish trader, you want to buy stocks which are going up. So you don't want to worry about the stocks which are going down. However, from your uh, hold strategy, you want to know what is happening uh, to some stocks which are holding. So if your stock is correcting significantly, you want to know. So in which case you would like to go back to the red ones. Okay. So it depends on the scenario. Let's say you are interested today, is a, let's say if the market is very uh, down day and you are interested to short it, you know, either intraday short or feature short or a uh, short using options, you may want to disable all the green ones which, and look focus on the stocks which are only going down. So that also you can do. So typically I keep both so that I get a sense of where the market is heading because when I keep both the green and red together, I do get a sense of how the market is behaving. Not only the combination of green and red and the, the intensity of green and red, also what kind of uh, companies are popping up, okay? Now, this particular screen you can see is by market cap. So usually the uh, companies which are high in market cap get better representation. So, but you may be interested more in, let's say, small cap and mid cap who have a smaller market cap. They get choked. Like, for example, this region, these stocks, you know, there is no space for naming them also. But if you move the cursor, the name comes in the below. Got it, no? So, or what you could do is you can expand a particular sector, sector producer manufacturing. I press. So, the entire screen is about producer manufacturing. So you get more, uh, uh, you know, room to look at things, right? Or you can go back to all. Today, uh, IT stocks have fucked up at market open. 
So let us look at technology stocks, how they are doing. Technology services stocks, okay? So technology services stocks, uh, you can see that uh, there are no big, uh, you know, blue chip names here, you know? So that has changed. So I don't see, they have, you know, other than Sonata software I saw. Uh, so depending on what's happening in the market, you can grow, you know, focus financial services. Let's look at finance. So if finance today, Kotak Bank is going up a bit, right? Uh, now, so this is how you can help yourself by sector also. Now, let us say, now it is around 12, 11 in the noon. You want to get a sense of what has happened since market open. In which case, you go to performance, uh, change from performance one hour to go to performance through the day, right? So performance through the day, I'm disabling uh, white ones. So today, if you look at it, since market open, most of the financial stocks are in red, IRFC is in green. So you get a sense of how the market is behaving for the day, right? So let us go to the all section, across all sectors. So today, how the market is behaving, you can see now the IT stocks are coming in technology services where TCS went up by 1.3%, Infi by 1.56%, HCL Tech by 0.94%, like this. So now I'm expanding technology services. You can see most of the IT stocks which are there. However, from a, a, a trading perspective, you may trade to positional or uh, you may position you may trade uh, you know kind of a swing trading for between uh, specific levels or you can do intraday so if you are doing intraday trading you don't want uh, the performance for uh, the whole day it is only for a perspective you want the minimum possible time window in this software it is only one hour though it is one hour you don't need to wait for one hour because every now and then, maybe a minute or so, depending on their server efficiency. Right now, as I speak, you can see their servers are not doing well. So let us have some patience. So for an intraday, you should always set to the minimum most possible, which is perform performance for one hour. While it is taking its own time, and let me continue to explain. See, now market cap representation is the size of the heat map. But you are more interested in, say, small caps and uh, mid caps who have smaller market market caps, so you cannot get good representation. So instead of market cap, you can go for volume. One vol uh, Last one hour volume gives a best, better situation. So I have now set it to volume one H and performance one H. Okay, finally it is coming here. This is for technology services. So now if you look at technology services, let me expand this because I have kept only the technology service. This Avance is a smaller company, but uh, Avance, you know, it is actually a penny stock. It is 0.98 rupees. That's why when there is an interest, there will be a huge volume. That is the problem. Got it, no? So if you are a penny trader, so you, if you want to chase this Avance, you can go behind it. So that is how you understand it. Got it, no? Anyway, today's focus is to identify the opportunities. So the opportunities can be identified for a bullish perspective in three different color shades, you know, lighter green, green, and darker green. And for a bearish perspective, three reddish uh, tinges, you know, light green, uh, sorry, light red, red, and dark red. So, so let us go back to all, which I think it will take time. Distinguish between uh, small cap and uh, mid cap versus blue chips. So, so for blue chips, I will always put market cap okay now one more thing i like to talk about uh, a scenario for example yesterday the uh, fertilizer stocks did very well in the last two days and especially some of the stocks went up by 20 percent or so yesterday let's say on a such a hot day you want to change your uh, uh, volume your uh, you know boundaries for representing uh, the price movements in red to green so typically into x1 is standard let us say yesterday you are interested only in the uh, fertilizer stocks maybe you are interested more 
in terms of its move minus 15% to 15%, let's say. So I'm choosing that. So now the value, value of these colors changes. The most red is minus 15% and the most green is plus 15%. So that gives you the distinction better. Okay, we are back. Uh, it is, uh, the server is doing better. It could be even our internet company problem. I really don't know. But now uh, the screen is working as required. For example, if I enable the white one, you can see that market is pretty much sleepy. Everything is within minus 1% to 1%. And that is something is not trading worthy for a day trader. So I never look at uh, these uh, no, white ones. So I just disable by removing that segment, right? So, so I do not look at uh, those. Let's say you are only interested in buying low and selling high. So you want to go behind only bullish ones. So then you keep pretty much green ones only, right? So you know, looking at this, uh, you know, you don't, though it is based on market cap, you don't see major market cap stocks. So today market is very, very sluggish and nothing much to play, right? So, so you can look at uh, some uh, uh, small cap and mid cap. See here also, you know, other than Sudlan, GMR, Infra. So now one aspect I wanted to talk about is, is that how the screen automatically changes if there is a price action move. To sense that I am bringing back all the red ones also. So I am keeping the screen for a while. See whether you can sense some color changes if the market behavior changes. It's difficult because market is very slow. Uh, otherwise, so take it for granted that every one minute or so this gets updated. And if you are impatient, you can always load the screen yourself once more and get the latest. So this is the purpose of heat map to sense the opportunities. Okay, let's say you are a positional trader or a swing trader so you are not interested so much on uh, intraday trading. So in which case you can go for performance by, let's say, longer time periods, right? You can go by, for example, performance by week. Okay, I'm disabling the white one. So which stocks have moved in the last one week? HDFC Bank has moved by 4.17%. ICICI Bank by 3.63%. You know, the red ones are correction ones. So you get a sense of what is happening in the market. HAL 1.44%. Now, let's say you want to see how it has done in the one month behavior. You know, for one month, you get a picture. HDFC Bank upgraded, you know, uh, raised by 13.19%. So you get, uh, you know, prominent movers. Let us do by one year basis. Okay. Now, this is a lot. SBIN 47.80%. So here, if you for uh, if necessary, you can go uh, disable the sector. So uh, the top uh, performers on an annual basis, therefore, will will be collected across the sectors. So this is how it is looking on a one-year basis. How it is uh, looking? For example, Reliance 25.5%, etc. Here you can change this color code. Instead of X1, I am going for X10, which is minus 30 to 30 percent because for one year, you are better off with that kind of a, a benchmark. So now the color codes are slightly evened out. For example, HCL Tech is in light in mid green, 24.39%. You know, anything above 30% uh, should be darker, right? So this will give a, an idea of how the market has moved or particular scripts have moved and who are the leaders. So here, if you are interested only in which companies have done well, you can again disable the red. So here is the screen. I am looking at performance one year based on market cap, the scale multiplied by 10 times. That means I am disabling all the red ones. So basically I am looking at 10 to 30% gains with the different color codes. In contrast, this is, the stock that went red in the last one year, again, using the scale into 10, uh, minus 10 to minus 30%. So these are the stocks which have underperformed. You know, Paytm at minus 53.75%, uh, 
you know actually bpcl misleading because it corrected sorry it uh, it went into a bonus share so don't worry about that the ITC minus 6.19%. See, here I am looking at only the middle point, that is minus 10 to 10%. The stocks that did not move much in the last one year, HDFC Bank, Bajaj Finance, Kotak Bank, Bajaj Finsar, LTIM. So you get that kind of a perspective here. Now, instead of market cap, what happens if I do this by volume? I have volume only up to month. So let us try to see on a monthly volume basis, how it looks, the stocks that did not move much. IDFC First Bank comes up with only 2.19%. So this may be useful. Maybe you know, if the markets are heated up too much and now you're looking at uh, a bit of bullish trend, maybe the stocks that did not do well will do well, you know, a value stock or whatever. So, so you will reconfirm that IDFC First Bank may be worthy, worthy of looking at it. So, but I do more of day trading. So I just go by performance in the last one hour. Actually, I wanted to show you how the, this heat map changes as the market uh, changes dynamically. So typically I keep it by sector. So for example, today I am more interested in IT stocks. So I, I can just zoom into that uh, particular uh, sector only, the first one. So usually that area is covered by financial services. So if I expand technology services, right now the market is saying that, you know, we are all, everything is red. Okay. So if something changes, the color will pop up. So if I put white, then probably you can see the color popping up between red and white because the market is kind of in a correction mode right now. So you don't see much of the green ones. So with this, I get to sense the market opportunity, market uh, you know pulse, and uh, how fast market is moving. See, if the market is moving very slowly, there is no point day trading. You know, there should be two times reward for your one-time risk. So, so actually, I'm not uh, doing anything today. I am not interested to... Because today is a kind of a right of day, you know, after the market opens, couple of things, then uh, the rest of the day, unless market shows you a different signal, it is no point. So, so this is how the market looks for the day. So, not much action. So, anyway, today's focus was to talk about heat map. So, how to use heat map to sense the market momentum, market opportunities and uh, you know market movements so i hope uh, this is something worthy for you without this i cannot do day trading got it now i will stop day trading if i don't have this kind of a tool so that is what i wanted to talk about so let us come to the end now let us wind up because the focus today was to show heat map as a tool this comes from tradingview.com and it is a free tool you need to have a good internet connection. Now, if you are using a phone, you can still do it through the browser, but it is very congested. Uh, if you are using a phone, I would recommend uh, go focus on a particular sector at a time. That way you can still use it. When I am on the move during the day, uh, I do you know use the phone. And sometimes I have used the heat maps on the phone also uh, just to you know verify the market condition or what should be done on the trade you know especially if we are holding a trade should i sell it now or if you are uh, want to buy something what is happening so even on the move i am able to use heat map on my phone except the real estate is very less in the phone so do it by the sector as i spoke you might have seen some color changes that is how it once in a minute or so it changes the color so which is good enough for your trading purposes. So I'm completing this heat map discussion for now. It is your imagination and your intelligence with which you can use this tool. There are uh, various filters here. It's more advanced topic. I will not get into that. You can you know, control the sizes also. I will not get into all that. Settings are there. So with this, I am actually completing the demo of heat map. So we today 
recognize how to look at various opportunities. But we cannot simply jump into an opportunity. We have to validate whether it is a, a credible opportunity, right? It should not be a flash in the pan kind of an opportunity. It should be something that is consistent with the trend or something. So you validate an opportunity using fundamental and technical analysis. Let us let me do a demo of these two. Trading tools and trade management is another session. Portfolio and taxation management, another session. Periodic performance review. So these are the upcoming uh, sessions. Through these sessions, you know, some of the wisdom also will come into this. So with this, I am ending uh, today's presentation and see you for the next, next presentation soon. Thank you so much.